So in the last video, we looked at these buffer objects and their buffer data, and there wasn't really anything new that I introduced in the last video, except we have multiple geometries. We have cubes, and we have arrows. Let me bring the scene back up again. And we have our two cubes and the one arrow. I'll fly into this cube. You can see the arrow is poking into the cube. This big hodgepodge of geometry. But anyway, we have this cube vertex buffer and this cube index buffer, this arrow vertex buffer, arrow index buffer. And in order to get these to render appropriately, before we do our draw elements call, we have to do the vertex of trib pointers, and we have to bind the appropriate buffers. And same thing here, bind the appropriate buffers, do the trib pointers. And there's runtime overhead to all these calls, and it's just a headache. It's just a headache. All this code is sitting inside of our paintgl function. Paintgl. And if you recall, when we sent our data down to OpenGL, we, we generated the buffers, we sent the buffer data down. And, and generate the buffers, send the buffer data down, same thing. Gen buffers, send it down. And we no longer have to do this. We only do it once, and we can reuse it throughout the entire program. And I want to clean up our paint call so that we don't have to do these attrib calls here. I want to do them once and only once. And that is where vertex array objects come into the picture. I've seen texts talk about vertex array objects. And you'll see several examples with vertex array objects, but it's confusing. It's like, what are these vertex array objects? Here we are on video something, 60 something in my playlist, and we have not yet once used a vertex array object. So I'm not quite sure why all of those texts like, or those books, texts, whatever you want to call them, I'm not sure why they like to jump the gun and start using vertex array objects so soon. But we are now poised in a perfect position to use vertex array objects to make our life simple. Vertex array objects essentially track all of the state that we set up with bind buffer and vertex attrib pointer calls. Right? We no longer have to send this in, these instructions. I don't have to call these functions anymore. In every paint, I can just do it with a vertex array. The vertex array will keep track of all of this. And then all I need to worry about is setting up my matrices and doing the draw call. And if I'm using instancing that we've seen in previous videos, I don't even really have to do much with the uniforms. I could just send down my matrices into my buffers and do the draw. Anyway, in this video, we're going to focus on eliminating this because the vertex array objects will keep track of that for us and so on and so forth. So without much further ado, as they say, let's let's get to it. Here's initialize GL. We send data to open GL. We really could do our uh, vertex array object code anywhere after that, but I'll do it right here. Set up vertex arrays. Vertex array objects are like these buffer objects. We create them, we store an ID, OpenGL manages them for us. It's just up to us to tell OpenGL what we want OpenGL to do with it. So I'm going to copy that function, Control-Alt-L. Actually, I'll just click here, and I'll put it right here. We shall declare the function. And then we need to define the function back in our CPP file. We'll do that right under send data to OpenGL. Right here, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to be somewhat consistent with the header file as far as where these functions are textually placed. But I think I'm out of sync already, so whatever. Uh, we need some IDs to track the vertex array objects. So gluint, uint, cube vertex array object ID. I think array object, the actual name array, vertex array object. It's I don't know if it makes sense, but maybe maybe it will. Let's keep going. Uh, let's do the arrow one. Arrow vertex array object ID. And just the same way that we create our buffers, we have to say GL gen vertex array vertex arrays. I want one of them. Store the ID for that in the cube vertex array object ID. I could say two here if I wanted to keep an array instead of storing these individually like I'm doing. I could have an array here of two and then say two here and I'd have to just pass the name of my array here. But I'm doing this the long way, hopefully to help you understand what's going on here. Uh, GL gen vertex array, uh, that will create one array object. I'll say this is the cube array object. And then we'll do another one, GL gen vertex 
arrays. Uh, I need one more, and I need the arrow vertex array object ID. That will give us another buffer object. That will be the arrow array object, or I should say arrow vertex array object, cube vertex array object, but you get the idea. And then just like with the buffers, we need to bind one of these. So GL bind vertex array. And I want to bind to the cube vertex array object ID. Now I actually need to make something clear. When I gen these IDs, the process of generating these IDs does not actually create the objects. It's not until I say GL bind vertex array that the, uh, the array object will become active. And if the array object does not exist, that is the point which OpenGL will create the array object. It won't do it when I just generate a simple ID for it. So bind vertex array, that actually creates the object. And now at this point, any of the uh, GL bind buffer calls that I do, GL vertex attrib pointer calls that I do, all those calls will be saved the state that those calls set up will be stay saved in the currently bound array vertex array object, which happens to be our cube vertex array object. So I'm going to go back to our paint GL, and I'm going to grab all this, copy, actually, control X, I'll cut it, and I'll paste it right here, because I want all of this state associated with the cube vertex array object ID. And then we need to do it with the arrow one, gl bind buffer arrow vertex array object ID. And then we need to do the arrow stuff. So let's go grab the arrow. Here's all the buffer info for the arrow, the element array buffer and the array buffer and the attrib pointer calls, all of that. We need to set that after we bind to the array vertex uh, the arrow vertex array object ID, say that 10 times. All right, so all of this state right here will be saved in this arrow vertex array object. And I could rebind to the cube vertex array object ID and change the state uh, later if I want to. I don't need to, but I certainly could. I can change this. I just need to make sure that I'm bound to the right vertex array object ID. And now rendering, our paint GL function got a lot simpler. All I have to say here is GL bind vertex array, and this is the cube vertex array object ID that is tracking that the data is being streamed, the attributes is being streamed from these buffers. So it's bind to that vertex array, and, and the info there will stream the right vertex data to render our cubes. And then right here I'm going to say GL bind vertex array object, and I shall say arrow uh, vertex array object ID. Now, we haven't been using vertex arrays. Now, we can certainly turn off uh, vertex arrays. If I don't want to use either one of these, then I just have to pass a zero here. Great! If, I, if all I said is true, then we shall get our cubes and our arrow back. I'll control F5, but I want you to pause the video and just think for a minute. There's a gotcha, and I haven't told you about the gotcha. Pause the video and think about the, see if you can identify the, the gotcha before continuing on. Control F5, build, run, and and the gotcha is not that I screwed this up. Oh, stupid me. I meant to say GL bind vertex array right there. Okay. All right. There is a still a gotcha. There is still a gotcha, and that was not it. That's not the fact that I, I'm going too fast. Here we go. Control F5, build, run. Nothing renders. What's the problem? Any idea what the problem is? Nothing renders. I'll tell you what the problem is. <laughs> I'm going to do a search for GL enable vertex attrib array. Remember we did, we enabled those attributes, both attribute 0 and attribute 1. We have to do that so that those attributes aren't pulling static data. We weren't bound to the one for the cube, nor the one for the arrow. We have to do these calls as well. Uh, after we bind to the vertex array, we have to say, hey, oh, by the way, also enable these attributes to be streamed through. So if I control F5 this, what will render? I just enable these vertex attributes arrays. Pause the video. Think what will render. Control F5, and we get two cubes. Right, two cubes. We no longer have the arrow, though. Where's the arrow? 
Why is the arrow gone? Any idea? Hopefully it's obvious why the arrow's gone. If I bring this diagram back up, this cube array object or vertex array object is keeping track of the fact that attributes 0 and 1 are enabled. Stream them in. But the array vertex array object, uh, it's, uh, these are not enabled for this object. So we have to enable it for both of the vertex array objects if that is our an intention. So we can do that like so. And I think, I think we're good to go after that. Control F5. Hopefully we get an arrow this time. Inside the cubes, the exact same thing that we had had before. Yep, I think it's looking pretty good. So that is OpenGL Vertex Array Objects. We only had to do this once. When we do our initialize, we do this once. And then when we actually paint, we just say, hey, all the state or the information where to pull the data from, it's in this vertex array object. And Okay, well, let's switch over to the arrow. And I certainly could change the state in here after binding to the cube, but, but I don't want to. I just want to set it up once, reuse it, reuse it. Next paint, reuse it, re... Come on, reuse it. And we're good to go. Now I'm at the end of this video, and there's one little thing I want to point out. Pretty unrelated to all of this. But in the midst of doing all my coding offline that I did before the previous video, I think it was, I went to, where is it, set up, uh, where's initialized GL? Right here, I don't know if you noticed, but I have this full transform uniform location, which is the location of the uniform in the vertex shader code. This uniforms location. I did this call once and only once after initialized GL. Once we install our shaders and our shaders have linked, then that uniform location is set for the duration of that program. So I can just grab that location once. I don't have to query it on every single pane. So, whew, what a video.